Okay, so the the fuel feeds now it's been run to the front of the engine bay. Um, it's always good to actually mark them. Um, fuel pressure regulator. I'm going to be running the the SAS. This was a uh, 79.99. Um, I have used this before. It, it's it's pretty decent. You can get them for 20 bucks, and you can get them for hundreds of bucks. Like you know, just budget. Remember, and uh, fuel pressure gauge because we have to dial in the um the fuel pressure which we're gonna basically go for 45 pace side make sure the car's like running nice and stock and then um yeah we'll turn it on and hopefully nothing leaks and is that my aliexpress stuff so where to fit this now i've been looking at the engine bay and look its beauty is the is in the eye of the beholder as they say so i can put it somewhere here the issue is the airbox ha um, has to go and too high. So I'm thinking just adding another 400 on the fuel hose and going here. Now, some might disagree with that, but at least in the future, if I needed to return the car back to stock standard, the world well, of fuel system has to stay regardless. So I don't want to block the air filter location. Um, but that's just my way of thinking. You do this at home on a get, just put it anywhere, you know. But yeah, that's just my mentality at the moment. And yeah, let's go screw this in. Priority. The fuel rig is now installed right there. Okay. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'll just quickly show you what the how the lines should go. I'm going to maybe run them at the top here, you know, keep them away from, you know, any harm. Um, bottom is the rear turn line. Side, feed. Uh, pretty straightforward. The vacuum line here, but when you do dial in the base pressure, you actually remove the vacuum line and then you dial it in and then you can put it in. Um, I don't even think it might even need it because if you look at in the engine bay, it was a fixed regulator. But like I said, we'll still plug it up how it is. We have any issues, we'll we know where to look. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, hang on. If this is where the, the so-called, this is the feed from the end of the rail and you are unable to get into here, how am I going to feed it? Well, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to run a, a Y-piece brass, whatever you call it. So pretty much this, this is on the, uh, the, the injector rail. We'll go, we'll go into here. Somehow you need to feed this fuel. So the feed from the back of the tank, which is this, We'll go into one side, and to regulate the pressure, it it go right into this port in the fuel regulator, and on the the return, it'll be it'll it'll, it'll pretty much be the the other hose that goes um, all the way to the back of the tank. This should work because it should just pretty much regulate the fuel hose, and because it all joins as one, um, shouldn't be an issue. It's it's our only option. We'll know pretty quickly, but um, I am quietly, um, quietly confident it should work. Hopefully, and um, yes, yeah, so I'll put that to, uh, together. And um, like I said, very, very important, and that's why it was important for us to cut the factory line. We had the issue where it was plastic, but now that's all five sixteen. It's it's going to make life a lot easier. We'll tuck that in there. It's beautiful. Away from all the heat. Thank you. Yep. Perfect. Like that. And then we'll run that. Now. What? Okay, so. Now we just got to put the rear turn line at the bottom. Everything else is ready to go. Um, you can leave it long, the return line. Plus it future proofs us if you want to use like an FMU or anything like that. Now, um, 
do think ahead. Don't just block things in the engine bay when you do anything because if something breaks down, you've got to change a fan belt. For example, I'll show you. Look, we still got nice spacing here. This can be moved out of the way. You want to get to the map sensor. The fuel lines can be moved out of the way. Um, yeah, so just be nice to yourself or to the next person that buys the car. And if something goes wrong, it's like, oh, yeah, I can still, you know, work on the car. It's not like a pain in the ass. And that goes with intercooler piping as well. Uh, pre uh, pr uh, pretty important you think ahead. and Don't just rush things just to get the car on the road. So we'll put that return line in. And then we're getting pretty close to... <laughs> Fuel reg in. It, the airbox must be fitted back. Battery terminal back on. This is an oil field gauge and a one-to-one -one fuel reg. What I'll do now is I'll, is I'll put this all back together and then I'm going to roll the car outside, turn it on, dial in the base pressure, wide band, go for a drive. And if it works, fingers crossed, then full send and it means we can start preparing for the installation of the turbo itself okay we're about to do our first start fingers crossed um i got my firefighting e equipment back there uh a hose um i'm gonna turn it on check for leaks hopefully it does turn on this is actually i've not turned this one at all and um then we'll just yeah we'll play around with the fuel rig if you stay there just in case something happens come on Okay, fuel probably took a while to get to the front. Let's now run, uh, ru uh, run to the engine. Check for leaks. No leaks. Fuel pressures, uh, fuel pressures are a bit under where it should be. That may have explained the the um, hard start. You can quickly follow me around. Check for leaks in the tank. Tank seems fine. That's good. So now I'll just dial it in. If you quickly follow me, ah. let's shoot for, for 45 psi. If you watch here, when you actually tighten it, it should go up. I just need this tool. See the pressure start going up on the needle slowly. Let's put around 40 something. That should be pretty close to factory. Put that nut. And then we, we can go for a drop, but always check for, for leaks. No leaks. Good. There you have it. Fuel setup done. Um, well, fuel return setup. We upgraded the, the Hyundai Gets. That first start took a while because it was like air and the system was pretty much dry or whatever you call it. Now it just turns on, which is good. Um, I'm going to take it for a drive off camera. Just make sure everything's good. Pull out the wideband, make sure everything's all, all happy. Uh, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about our options for fueling the, the turbo upgrade, which it is, um, and see how much money this actually burned through. Because our budget, yeah, let's try to keep it within uh, 2000 bucks. It's more fun. Right. Fuel system done. Well, everything bar the setup for boost are $275.89. That's my calculations. I can post that at the bottom. Hopefully, I can get that sorted with links. And so now I'm not really YouTube savvy. Um, and the uh, budget, what's remaining is $1,045.04. We are currently what I call the 35% mark. And we've used $954.96 once we work out the fueling for boost. Bang, we should hit the 40% for the forty mark. We're going to try to get some wins here because I think we're 200 bucks ahead where we should be at least, maybe even 300. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep going ahead. We can't stop now. And now we will discuss how we're going to fuel the vehicle for boost and the many options we do have. Okay, guys, now that we have the fuel return system, we've got to talk about how we're going to actually fuel it when it hits boost. Or it's just going to run lean. Now, bear with me. This might take a few minutes, but there's, there's many options. I'm just going to show you what's on the, the table. 
Yes, they are pretty budget friendly. So, um, dun dun dun. No, you're not going to fuel it with a drop saw, but you can fuel it with an FMU. Yes, this is a Vortec FMU. Now, it's a fuel pressure regulator on roids. I will explain it in a second on that um, on that board how they work. Um, they are a very old school way of fueling, but yet they still make them. And they still come with like low boost supercharger kits from Vortec. You don't have to buy a Vortec one. That was a bargain. I picked that up 150 Aussie bucks for some guy bought a kit in the US. He sold it for 110 bucks and was just like, I'll get rid of it. And I'm like, might as well. You can get these for 99 bucks. They do make Chinese knockoffs like Blocks, OBX. I actually personally have run a, a Blocks one and it's fine. The people will, will, will sit there, throw shade at them. I'll explain that um, in a sec how they work, but that's, that's option one. That is pretty cheap. So let's now get to option two. What? Yes. Option two is chuck in some injectors. Now, there's a thing going online about these gets that you can chuck in the injectors, play around with your fuel rig, and you'll be fine. Now, but generally speaking, there's always someone that says, yeah, I did that. It's okay. It runs a bit like shit. Get it tuned. Or eventually they go, they get it tuned. Now, it could be, you, if you remember when I went on that wideband, you know, when I plugged my wideband uh, meter and we uh, did the logging, how we went to open loop, closed loop, they may have not actually um, diagnosed that. And that might be why it runs like shit. Like just before it hits boost, it might be spluttering. That might be it. That might not be it. But, um, that's an option. That's could be super cheap. Like, like literally those injectors were uh, 50 bucks. And Hyundai, these gets, they run EV6 injectors for those that have asked me in the past. So they have a lot of options and, and I'll show you that on the board, but they, but they run at 14, I think 0.3 ohms and most of their charts are at 45 PSI. So that's option two. And now we've got option three. We'll look at, and then you have option three. Yes, this is an ECU Master DET3. It does have a free bar map sensor. Um, piggybacks are generally hated because, long story short, when you intercept a, a signal, the car gets tricked. That's fine. You think it's working, but then you have like a, another, for example, like the timing map. They'll go out of whack, and the car's suddenly like, "Oh yeah, I think I'm not under load or whatever." And look, look I can explain this for for days. That was a very basic way of explaining it. They do get a bad rap because people will blow their cars up sometimes. But the good thing about this one, and it was free, fifty-five, seventy-five at eBay. Sorry, I just had to look at the board there. Um, it's got fuel implant mode, meaning you can basically run the injectors on standalone. So you only have to intercept the the the, um, the timing signal. Sorry, I just had had to think about that. And um, just a few, few, a few other things, and it's the closest thing to a standalone engine management, in my eyes, in the form of a piggyback, which is pretty easy to wire in theory. So um, and that's like a beginner's thing. You can spend more on an engine management, but it's a $2,000 project. It's not like a $15,000 project where I'm going to drop like a Motec or some shit. Um, so let me show you on the board, and I'll, and I'll explain what's on this table and um then we got our options down the track when we do hit boost when i said that the fmu is pretty much a fuel pressure regulator on steroids i was pretty serious about that now um these can be adjusted you get different what they call discs um you can get like a four to one six to uh, six to one eight to one and the higher the disc the more fuel pressure per psi it picks up on boost so let me show you this chart so put that back okay for example let's say we're running seven psi now fmus i'll just quickly get back to this they are designed for stock injectors now that's the general general consensus of them so we'll go back to the to this chart this is based on the factory 164 cc injectors now if we're running seven psi and let's say that had a four to one disc in it which it does actually fun uh, fun fact it'll add an extra 28 psi on on the factory fuel rail pressure and they'll send our fuel rail up to 73 psi now look here Say we needed to run a 10 to 1 disc because we don't know what the air fuel ratios are going to be once it sees boost. 
we're going to add 70 psi on top of the 45. That's 115 psi on the fuel rail. Now, you don't want that. You, in fact, the general idea is try to keep it under 100. Peak at 100 at most. It's very ghetto, but it does work. And it's, it's been around for a while, but it is like basically stage one of a fuel system, you know, or like the, the like, you know, bottom of the barrel. Now, um, here, there is a science to dropping the fuel pressure, the base fuel pressure on bigger injectors. So these injectors that are on the, the, the table here, they're actually from a two liter G4 GC, um, motor and they're, they're 210cc now the general consensus i'll show you this injector chart the all these injectors do fit and that's what they actually flow they're all hyundai and you can get them second hand which i prefer instead of chinese injectors just those knockoff ones because you don't know what you really you're going to get now generally on the charts as soon as you drop a psi and a half that these injectors they lose between two to six cc on their flow so the science the backyard science is if those 210 cc's that i have on the table here if i drop the fuel rail pressure to around 30 to 35 psi and that's why i did those wide band runs earlier it should make the see the injector on idle flow like a stock injector that's so at, at 30 psi these 210s should flow around 164 or 35 psi but what that does is it gives us headroom for 70 psi worth of fmu if we had to put a 10 to 1 disc just to run an air fuel ratio of let's say 12 um that's at 7 psi now you want to run more than 7 psi because firstly that's factory timing you shouldn't be doing that and secondly 7 psi is the upper limit and that's where you have to run 98 octane I, like I know that sounds pretty standard for someone out there think oh I won E10 it's cheap nah just use your bike mate you're gonna blow your car up so um so that's that's the idea behind it and like I said the second idea is to run this but the point is I'm trying to keep it cheap I'm trying to show people the, the cheapest way to get the car on the road like I said, there are some in some ideas on the forums to do this, to do that. Well, this is my way. A fuel system is the, it's like the beauty is the eye and the beholder. It's the way you interpret it and the way that you want to run it. And um, I'm going to go down that path because we need to save some money. So we are going to try the FMU. Um, and then we're going to see on that four to one disc how it responds with the factory injectors, which is probably going to be a fail. And then then I'll, I'll put in those 210 cc's, 210, yeah. And then um, I'll, well, that's if they're needed. They'd drop the fuel rail pressure. And then if we need to change the FMU disc, and if that works, try to keep the budget under 2,000 bucks. And then down the track, there'll be phase two of the project. That's when we send it, we add more boost, and let those 175 tires that already have no, no traction, just, yeah, we'll send them to the afterlife.